So basically just watch this video if you get overwhelmed in life. If you get overwhelmed and you don't know what to do, you get stressed, it's like piles of data just stacking on top of you. Data from the past, worries of the future, the present situation, overwhelming cloud of impending doom. If it takes over once in a while, which it does to everybody, let's face it, we're all human beings. We're all going through this life and doing as best as we possibly can, hopefully. Sometimes it just hits us like a pan round the face. Stress, overwhelm, deal with this on top of what you're already doing. If you want a plan of action to pull yourself out of this when it happens, to be able to spot it before it happens. Prepare for it in advance and allow each time it happens to be shorter than the last and watch this video, I'll see you on the other side. I'm so glad you decided to be wise today and watch this video because this video, I'm telling you, if you implement this stuff, will absolutely help you in so many situations like it's helped me. I'm only doing this video because, why would I be doing this video? I'm doing this video because this stuff works and it's worked so well for me, made my life so much better that I just feel compelled to share it with you. And if you use it and it works for you, then comment down below, let me know how it's working for you and inspire other people to implement it in their lives. This is the practical tools to pull yourself out of overwhelm and stress. Let's go. Okay, so look, every situation is different. I can't talk to any specific thing, but it's all the same essentially when we're stressed, when we're overwhelmed, it's just too much data has gone into the brain. It's all joined together like a big cloud. What happens is, is we try and logically figure out what to do. We know the right things to do, go for a run, do this, do that. But we've lost it at this point. We've lost the war. One thing I've learned more than anything is fighting it fuels it. When you've got that big overwhelming cloud of doom around you. You miss the warning signs and you just kept on plowing through with work or thinking about the future or dwelling on the past or struggling and trying to figure it all out and then boom, you're just overwhelmed. You've missed it, <laughs> it's over. So at this point, knowing this, knowing that it's over, you messed up essentially, fighting it will only fuel it you'll only feel more depressed, more anxious, more overwhelmed. So really prevention is the cure. It's the last thing you wanna hear when you're trying to get a tip for getting out of overwhelm, but really it should always be the first tip. Let's stop being overwhelmed and stressed in our life. I'm talking about excess stress. I'm not talking about natural stress, kids running around, work, you know, just general stress. I'm talking about the excess stress that we allow for ourselves. This comes from the overactive thinking, thinking mind, and we create more stress for ourselves. This is the stuff we can eliminate. All the rest we just have to kind of manage, it's just life. Prevention is the cure. We want to start thinking about this. If we're experiencing overwhelm and stress a lot in our lives, it's now time to start thinking about preventing that from happening in our future. In the present moment, which is right now, if you're with me and you're listening to me and you're focused on this conversation right now, we are in the present moment. You're not thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the future. If we decide in this present moment to work on ourselves, make sure that this happens more infrequently, then our future is gonna be better. It's as simple as that. So that's the general idea here. This is what we're gonna do. But when it happens, it's too late. So I'm gonna walk you through what to do once it's too late. It's like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute. And then as you're flying down going, parachute, send me a parachute. It's too late. It's too late. You already jumped out of the plane without a parachute. This is the same as missing the warning signs and just carrying on through and doing whatever and not really thinking about the potential, the cause and the effect of what you're doing and then boom. You're in overwhelm. You're far too stressed to deal with life. So what do we do? So what do we do? We learn from the past, we make change in the present, and we create a better future. Prevention is the cure. How do we do this? We get out a pen and paper or a notes on your phone right now in this moment. Do it and pause the video and work with me. Don't allow this video and the other video and the next video and the past video and all the other videos to just be information that you consume. Oh yeah, that sounds good, I'll do that. No, you won't. <laughs> 
If you don't watch videos and do the exercises, if you don't read books and do the exercises, and you keep storing them up here, you're not gonna do the exercises. First of all, have a word with yourself. Are you one of these people? I was one of these people. Now, when I hear the good stuff, I write it down. I either do it in the moment or I write a note. At least do that for your future self. So I'm gonna throw some exercises at you. I want you to do it right now in this moment or make notes, write them down and decide when you're gonna do it. Otherwise, <laughs> you're not gonna do it. You know you're not gonna do it. So let's do it. So if prevention is the cure, let's prevent ourselves from experiencing overwhelmment, stress in all its forms, wherever possible. So life can be summarized in lots of categories. So let's just say consistent health, relationships, spirituality, finances, career slash direction, fun, excitement, physical health, emotional health, family and friends, contribution. So for exercise one, in the information in the video, there's that list of these categories. I want you to write down one thing next to each category of an issue that you see yourself having. Maybe it's an issue or a problem or an obstacle that often comes up, or one that you can see coming up in the future. Maybe one that's just come up in the past. Just anything related to your life. Write that down. And then B, think of one thing that you could do to prevent that thing happening. Let's say in relationships, be honest with yourself. An obstacle, an issue is your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband gets annoyed at you for X, Y, Z. What can you do to prevent that happening from them getting annoyed at you again in the future, thus making the relationship more harmonious? finances, maybe you want to make more money. What could you do? What's one thing to prevent you from not having the financial freedom that you want? Maybe it could be study money, listen to audiobooks on money once a month. One thing that's going to help this situation. Maybe family, friends, there's a certain person in your family that rubs you the wrong way or you've lost touch with a friend. One thing you could do is unconditionally love that family member even if it's something you don't want to do just love them give them the time and see if anything changes that friend that you've lost contact with get in touch go through this list find the obstacle the issue and find one thing that's going to help you in the future have a better experience of life and if i've missed a category add in a category and let me know down below what you've got what you found that i've missed and together we can really build up a great list of things that you can do to prevent you from doing things that you may have done in the future, thus making your future a better experience. It's as simple as this. And if you have this conversation with yourself, you do a bit of this self-inquiry, then life can be a lot more seamless and less overwhelming. Sometimes it just takes a little tweak. So my examples while I was doing this exercise was finances. And for A, I never valued money. It wasn't something I thought about. I had a kind of a bad relationship with money. I, you know, thought I didn't really like rich people. And um, I've had a lot to learn. I'm still learning, but I was really far from a position of creating wealth because I was secretly going, ah, oh, fuck you, <laughs> which isn't good if you want more of that thing. My example was having a poor money mindset and the prevention there for me to remind myself to overcome this obstacle was money's really helpful. Money can equal freedom, freedom to do what I wanna do and that can be a good thing. What I choose to do can be a good thing. Money is freedom. This started rewiring my brain around finances and financial stability. So we've got to unearth what we're truly thinking about this thing, this category, have a conversation with it, and then choose something positive to work on. So for me with career and direction, when I started this, much like everybody else, you have imposter syndrome. Who am I to do this thing? I can't do that. I'm not as good as them. Ooh, all of that. My B prevention was to remember my self-worth and to remember what I have done and to love what I've done and love what I do regardless of what anybody thinks. Who cares? This dialogue of who cares, this is my journey. I shouldn't really even care what other people think about what I love. Huh? <laughs> See, I'm doing a video right now. An old version of me would have gone, oh, there's a person behind me. Who cares? <laughs> I'm not being loud. He's not bothered. Who cares? 
And this led me to remind myself about my punk rock upbringing of really not giving a shit. And, you know, I wasn't an anarchist, but I did what I did and I didn't care what anybody thought of me as a superpower. So if you want that too, that kind of certainty and confidence of not caring what anyone thinks, as long as you're being good to yourself and others, who cares? The more I had this conversation with myself, the more I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do. If anyone likes it, they like it. I don't care if they don't like it. So find your thing and pull out the thing that you really feel, the thing that you might not wanna admit to anybody else, only to yourself. Pull it up, pull it up, <laughs> and look at it, have a conversation with it and write it down and get familiar with it. And this is how we start to change the story. Step two, once we've prevented it from even happening, step two, when it is, when it's already happening, is to remember the awareness of the data overload. When I say data overload, it really is we are taking on information all of the time. The moment we wake up, we're looking on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and you're consuming the world's thoughts the world's reaction to the world's thoughts, the dialogue of the world, the dialogue of everybody, everybody's aspirations, imaginations. Look around you, everything you can see apart from nature, and that's another conversation, is somebody's imagination. Someone has designed it, created it, and manifested it into this world. There is a lot going on in life, in your life, in my life, in our lives. There's a lot of information. And then you've got adverts on top of that designed to distract you and pull you into their brand, their product, and sell. It's everywhere. So the more tuned in we get to ourselves, the more self-aware we are, the more we know ourselves, the more we can go through life and see it, before it gets us, essentially. You know, we see the adverts, we know what the intention is. We can kind of sidestep these things, duck and dive, matrix styly, you know? So awareness that it's happening all the time. The moment you wake up, your mind is gonna go stuck in the past, stuck in the future. What's happening now? <laughs> Basically what happens. So knowing this, we can wake up and we can almost come at the day like that. All right, let's go and choose what we consume. And the more we do this, the less we dance with the past and the future and the programming that comes at us, and the more we choose what we're thinking about, choose what we look at and consume, eating, drinking, everything. The data overload, when it happens, it means we are stuck in future thinking or stuck in past thinking. We are never overwhelmed when we are in the moment. It's not possible because in the moment, we're essentially more free from the thinking mind. We're not, we don't have stuff going on up here. And what happens is when you really get stressed and you really get overwhelmed, then you slip and you hit depression. And once you've hit depression, it's over. You've just got to really ride that out and use the right tools or have someone like me in your life that's going to literally drag you out of it. So we don't want to get there. We want to prevent that. We want to be aware of when we're getting stressed, when we're getting overwhelmed, when our breath is getting... <sighs> we want to slow it down as often as possible and be in the present moment because the more we're in the present moment, just being here in whatever you're doing, being in your doing, noticing when the mind is thinking about the future, which creates anxiety. Oh, don't need to be doing that. I'll just save the future thinking for when I want to imagine something good or plan something good. We don't want to get stuck in this, the past, dwelling on the past, all the old memories and then how we feel about them. Bad old memory, how do we feel? Oh, over and over, it's like a loop. I'm just going to use the past for remembering things that I do want to think about. Where did I leave my... Oh yeah, there we go, back to the present. This is another way of doing life taking control, harnessing the present moment, breathing into the present moment as often as possible, returning to the present moment, and in the present moment, setting our future self up by doing things like this. And when the negative and wanted past rears its ugly head, and when the anxiety of the future comes in, oh my God, what's gonna happen when I... As long as you're showing up in life and doing action and, and doing what you can, and you know, feeling like you're doing enough once in a while, once a day going, I am enough. I am doing enough. 
even if you're not doing enough, saying that over and over again will start to get in there and you'll start to think, I should probably do a little bit more. But if you do a lot of stuff and you're out there and you're doing the work and you're showing up and you're at least waking up every day and getting out of bed and just doing what you can, you're doing enough. So tell yourself you're doing enough and watch when this comes in and watch when this comes in and just either grab it and look at it and say, no, <laughs> or just blow it away. <laughs> get on it, awareness. 24 7 it sounds exhausting but it's not it clears the space it clears the noise it clears the mental chatter it becomes effortless and if you keep doing it every day over and over just tuning into watching your thoughts noticing when it's future noticing when it's past returning to the present listening to the person you're talking to, listening to the video you're watching, not writing something down, do something else, watching the TV when you watch it, eating the meal when you eat it. The more you practice this, the more you practice being present, you will notice that the chatter of the future and the chatter of the past dissolves. It will always come up, but generally it dissolves. It's no longer a part of your day. You have control over it not the other way around. This to me was everything when this happened, when the tipping point happened. It's climbing this mountain for years, searching for answers and doing all the work. And then one day I noticed that actually I felt pretty present. And when the thoughts of the future came up or the thoughts of the past came up, I noticed that I seemed to be in control and I could almost like the puppet master of your mind. Nope, nope. If you keep showing up, you keep practicing this over and over, it will become your default setting. When it does, it will feel really good. <laughs> you really can't unlearn this stuff. So once you've practiced it and once you've experienced it for yourself, I know you've already experienced this, but if you do this effortlessly, relentlessly, then life will transform forever. It's a done deal. And then it's just a case of managing life as normal, but you will break through to a level where no matter what happens in life, you will be able to handle it so much better than you did before by being aware of your thoughts and coming back to the present over and over and over and over again. So let me know about your experiences below. Your experiences help inspire other people to have their experiences. So let's keep this going. Okay, exercise three. This is a brilliant exercise. What I want you to do is create a note for yourself to tell yourself exactly what you need to hear when you're experiencing stress and overwhelm. This is only gonna work if you look at this when you're experiencing stress and overwhelm. And when it happens, you might not wanna do this exercise, but if you force yourself to do it and work through these steps, you will notice that it was the best thing you could have possibly done for yourself. And by doing this, you'll start to want to do it every time, but you'll notice the time gets less and less and less every time you do it. So it's a win-win. So in this note, I want you to talk to yourself like you would talk to you. I like to use vocabulary that grabs my attention. If I make it too kind of formal, it doesn't really go in for me. So I'll say something like, listen up chief. I don't even call myself chief, but seeing that word will make me go, Listen up, chief. You're experiencing a data overload. Remember that you are not your thoughts. You are not the situation. You've missed the signs. You've missed the signals. It's okay. Let's get to work. Whatever. Something that makes me go, oh, okay. Giving yourself direct commands. So think about how you would be in that situation. Maybe you need to swear at yourself. Maybe you need to go, oi, <laughs> say your name. This is what we're gonna do, whatever. You know you better than anyone. So tune in and think about what you need to tell yourself. So my letter to myself after saying, oi chief, whatever, might say, step one, acceptance. You miss the signals. It's okay. Breathe. Step two, if it's hard to smile right now, if it hurts to smile, to even think about love and happiness, aim for contentment. Forget happiness, forget euphoria, forget partying like these guys and having fun. Aim for contentment. This is the level you wanna to get to. Let's just master contentment. You can always jump up to happiness later. So breathe. So step three, how long do you wanna stay feeling overwhelmed and stressed? When do you ever ask yourself that? How long do you wanna stay there? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two days? 
It's only you that's going to put yourself in this prison of your mind. Decide from another perspective of looking at your life, you're seeing yourself, looking stressed, looking overwhelmed. How long do you want to be there? How long do you want to punish yourself for? It's not punishing anyone else. How long do you want to be there for? And when you've got that number, I got my number. The last time it happened to me, I was like, I need an hour. <laughs> I need an hour to wallow in all of it. You know, I'm not talking about sadness as well. When we need to go through sadness and grief, that's different. We're talking about the overwhelm and stress of all the things I've got to do and it's all too much, all of that kind of stuff. How long do I want to do that for? An hour. I want to do it for an hour. And then I commit to getting the hell out of there. So you got your number. It might be two minutes. You know what I can do? I just want two minutes of this and then, okay, I'm good. I just needed to process it. So find your number and then breathe. So step four, choose one good thing that's gonna make your day better. One good thing that's gonna make your life better. It could be just going for a walk, it could be listening to some music, it could be having a little dance, forcing yourself to have a little jig. You can make some food, you could call a friend. I mean, you can figure this out for yourself, but figure out what that thing is for you in that moment. Maybe it's go for a really fast run. Tune into yourself, what do you need? Not what the book says or what someone says that you should do. Do five star jumps, <laughs> spin around. What do you need in this moment? It could be a small thing, it could be a big thing. Maybe you need to call someone up and tell them that thing that you've been wanting to tell them. Maybe you need to just book that trip. Maybe you just need to, to really shake something up to pull you out of constantly feeling overwhelmed with stress. Only you know what to do. So honor all parts of you, the light and the dark. Do good things but honor the shadowy parts, the shadow self, the murky, ugly stuff that you don't wanna look at. And by doing these exercises, you're preventing yourself from slipping to the real rock bottom stuff. You don't have to go there. You don't have to constantly be up and down. You can live from a place of contentment and experience love, joy, peace, happiness, relief daily. For years and years and years, I was in the lower realms of experience and I was attracting more of what I didn't want because that's what I was feeling. I wasn't giving myself love. So when you honor all parts of you and you work on yourself and you tweak it and you do this kind of stuff, <laughs> you might notice that life gets better. It might get so good, you rent an apartment in Thailand and doing this on the balcony like these guys. <laughs> Okay, step four, we've now got the pumping music, we're all in. This is the best exercise you could possibly do for yourself. In the moment, you feel stressed, you feel overwhelmed, get that pad and pen, go to the notes on your phone, and write down everything you can think of that needs sorting out in your head, that's making you depressed, making you overwhelmed, making you stressed out, write that list. So if that's one, number two is why do you feel this way? Get to the bottom of it. Dig into those thoughts. Why do you feel the way you feel? What has caused you? Just by putting your attention on it, just by selecting that thought and going, okay, let's talk about this thought. But just by looking at it and asking these questions, why do I feel that thought? You will usually get an answer. Oh, it's because they said that or this happened. Okay, this is the origin. This is the origin of why this is happening. This will go round and round and round and round until you dissolve the root cause. There's many ways to do that, but this is a wonderful way just by pulling it up and talking to it, looking at it and get to the bottom of it. You've got the answers, but we just go like that. And by doing this all the time and not addressing them doing it in time with the music. <laughs> by doing this all the time and not addressing ourselves, it will just keep popping up and it will turn into dis-ease, it will turn into overwhelm, it will turn into stress. So number three would be what are you gonna do about it? You know what the things are, you know all the things you gotta work on, you know why those things have happened, what's come up, where it came from. What are you gonna do about it for each one of those thoughts? Go through those thoughts, write down what you're gonna do about it. It could just be one simple action, one good thing. That's all it takes, the, the conversation with yourself to acknowledge what's happening up here that's going round and round, pulling it up, looking at it, having a conversation and making a decision of what to do for the individual things that are collectively creating a big cloud in your head. Because what happens is when you start to do this, you realize that that cloud separates into mini clouds. 
smaller clouds and you see the sky in between and the sky in between is peace is equanimity is balance is harmony is presence and these clouds start blocking that presence and pulling you into thoughts of the future and the past and if we just take a moment to recognize them deal with them make a mission to overcome them and dissolve them they dissipate and they dissolve and we're back to this blue sky we don't get taught this stuff it sounds so obvious it sounds so obvious we don't do it because it just seems too rudimentary too simple but if you do do it you instantly feel better you instantly feel calmer you instantly feel relief the stress and the overwhelm from the past and the future dissolves it disappears and you might be left with oh actually it's not so bad still got a few things to sort out but it's not so bad so i just want to share with you this i am a mindset and transformational coach i have to be on 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 and happy because i'm teaching other people to deal with their issues and to deal with obstacles and to break through in life so i do the yoga the meditation the mindset the self-talk the good diet all of the stuff to keep me like this building my big transformation course link below it will absolutely change your life it's all of these ideas wrapped up in one course that you can have forever and do on your own time so you can transform your life in love health wealth success and freedom it's a no-brainer the bad things will always come up and when they do watching these videos you'll have the tools to manage and dissolve them and if you don't yet have the tools, then get the big transformation course. You'll have all of the tools for the rest of your life for literally every situation that will come up in your life. Link below. So prevention is the cure. Look at your life, all areas of your life and set your future self up for having a better experience by doing these little tweaks. Watch and observe your mind as you go through life. The future and the past thinking mind tune in to the present moment. Do the self-inquiry, do these exercises. If you haven't done them yet because you've just been watching the video, write on your calendar, write in your diary when you're gonna do it and do it. Watch it through, make notes and just fucking do it. Because when you do it, you will have the tools to help you in the future and you'll dissolve a lot of trauma of the past. It's a win-win situation. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment and all that jazz. I'll see you soon. Oh, watch the next video. It's awesome.